Welcome homies and homets to a game that will make you very wet, Subnautica. Come with me as we discover all that this underwater survival game has to offer, such as epic base builds and machinery, massive leviathans, and dugongs with questionable STDs. This is my 100 days in Subnautica. We begin this epic journey off by escaping our exploding mothership in a fully reliable futuristic escape pod. Oh, this isn't good. Oh crap, isn't this life? This is a bad life pod. This is a very bad life pod. Ouch. We awake to our not very reliable escape pod caught on fire. Luckily, our not very reliable escape pod came fitted with a fire extinguisher. I, I just uh, don't know where it is. Let's get out. I'll pick up the fire extinguisher. Okay, okay. Where the frick's the fire extinguisher? Is it in the fire? Seems like a bad place to be. Oh, right there. Oh, yeah. See? Ah. This is averted. Once the fire was extinguished, I pulled out my iPad generation 326, only for it to tell us that we now have a fire extinguisher. Thank God for futuristic tech. I then climb out of this not very reliable escape pod. Ooh. Ah. Seems quite ominous. I realized that this is our life now, so I dive into the water to drown myself. But this is when I realized that even though we are miles away from any land, it's actually quite shallow here and full of life. I spot bits of wreckage from our mothership in the water, but what really catches my eyes is this fish shaped like a boomerang. Imagine if they called this the boomerang fish. Hello there. Oh, they did. Now that I have my boomerang, I no longer wish to drown. Oh shit, my oxygen. That was close, so we need to keep an eye on that. I went back to board my very unreliable life pod and found we had a damaged radio, a storage container, and a fabricator, which is basically a crafting bench for like everything. Oh, I can cook my boomerang fish. Let's cook it. Oh, poor boomerang fish. With some fresh seafood in hand, we went back into the ocean to explore and gather some resources and kind of see what's around. We first find some acid mushrooms. It sounds so safe, we touched it with our hands. Kids, if something's called an acid mushroom, don't touch it with your hands. Then there was a limestone outcrop with copper in it. Copper is an essential component of all powered equipment. Your probability of survival has just increased to unlikely, but plausible. Well, I guess she's pretty confident in us, isn't she? Further exploring, we found some of these big, long seaweeds. They're called creep vines, and we could harvest these bulbs off of them. Stalker is friendly, right? It's just kind of large. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Is he coming after me? Get out of here, son. On this planet grows in unusual Holy crap. And diverse ecological biomes. Further study recommended. What the heck is that thing? Looks like a dugong with chlamydia. Close to the chlamydia dugongs, we found some metal salvage. Oh, our inventory's full. I just had to clear some space before I could pick it up. As the night fell, we went back to our life pod so we could craft up some of our essential tools. Starting with a scanner so we could, well, scan things. It also helps you unlock blueprints so you can craft other things too. Then a fresh set of fins so we could swim a little bit faster. And finally, a knife. Just in case we want to do a little bit of stabby stabby. So the first thing we did on day two was scan as many things as we could. Starting with this brain coral. And then yeah, I scanned this stalker as well. I then ventured into a little cave with my stabby stabby knife, but then I was confronted by this. Oh, are you, oh wait, what is that? What is that? Dude just exploded in my face. I'm not really a big fan of things exploding in my face, but we did find cave sulfur. I'm starting to not feel very safe down here, but do you know what does make me feel safe? Hear me out. Sharks, that's Surf, like this guy. His name is Bruce, and Bruce is from today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Now the team at Surfshark help you stay protected while you're online, all by encrypting your private information from your device to the internet. This way, no weirdos on the internet can take your private information and use it against you. Now me and my family also love this as well, but for a different reason, Netflix. See, I live here in Australia, and here we can't get my favorite anime, Naruto. But when I switch my VPN's location to, say, Los Angeles in the USA, boom, baby, we now have Naruto, and me and my family can binge the entire series as much as we want. Also, the guys at Surfshark VPN told me that I can hook you guys up with a special deal. See, all you have to do is use my link in the description below, head on over there, sign up to Surfshark VPN, use my promo code AaronAztec, and you will receive an extra three months completely free. But hey, if you're unhappy with Surfshark VPN, a Reaper Leviathan is going to come into your house, grab you, and take you away. What, what's that? Oh, I, I can't say that? There's a 30 day. 
sorry no there's a 30-day money-back guarantee so really there's no risk so go ahead and click that link below and enjoy the safest and funnest experience on the internet today thank you surfshark for sponsoring this video we're back at the life pod and i made a repair tool now we got a repair tool so i repaired our radio with the repair tool I saw this thing sparking along too, so I figured I'd repair that as well. Oh, all that power's back. That's good, I think. I then went back out in the ocean and then started scanning some things, like this trap fragment. I guess we can make that now. I found a creature egg, but I'm not sure what to do with these just yet. I'm sure we'll figure it out later. Whilst I was out scanning basically everything I could find, I came across this. This is a sea glide fragment, but you need two of them. Oh, th th there's the second one. Well, with that, we can then craft, well, uh, a sea glide a sea glide is basically exactly what it sounds like it helps you glide through the sea uh, i mean it just kind of makes you go through the water a lot faster <laughs> i imagine some things that i'd like to glide through <laughs> your mom with the sea glide i felt a little bit more confident to be able to explore deeper parts of this ocean Whoa. what the heck is this big Is that a sexual organ? Oh, more things we can scan. Beacon fragment? Don't mind if I do. Oh, we need two of them. Oh, is that a second one? How convenient. Just below that big ass alien thing, we found a shipwreck. And in shipwrecks, you can find lots of things to scan for some brand new blueprints. We got a mobile vehicle bay fragment, ultra glide fins, a second mobile vehicle bay, which means we can craft it. And we walked away with a desk. Well, swam away. Oh uh, crap, we're running out of oxygen. Oh, uh, uh, is that what happens when you die? Day four on our quest for deep sea dominance, I found some more things to scan. I found one of three pieces of Seamoth and one of two pieces of the bioreactor. Searching through my blueprints, I found that I could build a habitat. So I guess I'll do exactly that. I built this long, stiff shaft compartment and then placed a hatch on it so I could enter it. Uh, so it turns out the habitat needs power in order to supply that good old oxygen. And since we're environmentally friendly, we slapped on a solar panel for some electricity. Gotta love good old green renewable energy. Ah, uh, that's better. We can breathe. I returned back to our life pod and spoke to the radio. Play a pre-recorded distress call. This is Ozzy from the cafeteria. What the hell, guys? They didn't warn us this might happen. Our pod was almost crushed by the Seamoth Bay on the way down. Now we're hanging on the edge of a cave system, and this grim looking snake thing's trying to eat through the hull. It then pinged us two locations that we need to go and discover. Quickly grabbed some supplies from the ocean and then made a battery for our sea glide. It's not fun to be out far away from our base without any extra battery. And then we ventured out further than we had ever traveled before. 500 meters to be exact. And it's not really that far, but look, look, this is scary, bro. Our first stop of this day was Life Pod 3. There, okay, we can get in here. I then arrived at Life Pod 17 as the sun set and we discovered some more scannable objects. Seamoth fragment. Uh, I guess that's about it. On our way back to base, this happened. Holy crap. After that crazy explosion, we made it back to base and I started storing all of the goodies that we collected along the way. Then I figured it was time to add some more pieces to our base. I wanted to build out this direction, but it didn't seem to work. So I guess we're building out this direction. But first, I had to remove the hatch. And there we go. Our shaft is just a little bit longer. I put the hatch on the side now, just in case we wanted to keep extending it. I filled out our base with some more of the essentials. Some more lockers, a radio, and of course, the fabricator. I then went ahead and made ourselves a mobile vehicle bay. This is a place that we can craft, well, vehicles. Now that we can make a sea moth, I went out to gather all the materials we needed to be able to make it. The caves were my best bet. And since we had the sea glide, we didn't get exploded on. Yay. And now we can make the sea moth. Day five, we took our brand new sea moth out for a spin, trying to explore some of the new areas in this crazy world. But as we approached this weird structure, we got hit by some radiation. Oh crap, radiation. We better get out of here. Further exploring away from the radiation zone, we found some more debris from the big spaceship and also completed the bioreactor blueprint. I got so distracted by having so much fun exploring that I forgot that we needed to, you know, keep our water and our hunger up. So I raced back to base as fast as I possibly could. I knew I didn't have any water to drink in base, so I had to get out and try and harvest some of these bladder fish. Yeah. I raced back to the fabricator so I can get that sweet nectar of life into me. Oh, oh crap, we'll 
too late. And now that we're sufficiently hydrated, we can go back to exploring. I found this little cavern in the rocks here, so I went deep to go and find out what we could find. And then we found this new purplish pink biome. Oh, what's that? There's like a little area down there. Oh, but we... It's too deep. Since it's still the early game, I want to try and find as many of these crash sites as possible. Basically because all of these crash sites hold valuable blueprints for us to be able to learn so we can craft some good stuff. They also have these things too. They're called PDAs. They're kind of important for the story. This particular crash site, we got a floodlight blueprint. It's uh, not that great, but it, it's something, I guess. The morning of day seven and the ocean is pitch black and I am guided by the eerie sounds of the whales in the background. Venturing further than I have ever before, I spot these little things coming down from the ocean. It looks like we found an island, and we're not too far away from the Aurora. So of course, I have to explore this place. Dude, is that an island? What if we can have a base up here or something? I explored this island a little bit further and scanned some of its local fauna. And then I found this mountain path that seemed to lead up this mountain. So of course I followed it and it led me to this. It's like an outpost base. Inside it, we found some plants and a PDA. Integrating new PDA data. Heading back down the mountain, I spot another outpost base. This little location here did have some things we could scan, like this room, which is the new multi-purpose room. We also got the blueprint for the stasis rifle as well, and the exterior grow bed. This whole place was basically blueprint heaven. I made my way up another mountain on the other side of the island. At one point, you could even see the original outpost that we were at, but this led us to this outpost. Oh, more plants and an indoor grow bed. So mind if I do? I scanned all the plants and then I learned that you could actually scan the, the building that it was in. Now we got an observatory. I was pretty happy with today's adventures and with the sun setting, I think it's time for us to head on back to base. I make my way back to base, but then this happens. Oh no, radiation. Oh, I died. Before dying again, I head back to our life pod because I think that's going to have to be our safe space for now. I went straight to the fabricator to try and find out what I need to be able to make a radiation suit. And I need two fiber mesh and two lead. To make the fiber mesh, you need creep vines. So I went out for a quick stabby stab to collect some creep vines. Mm, and there it is. Perfect. We've got it. Now all I need is lead. The thing is, I know I have some lead in my storage containers back at the base that's radiated right now. I quickly run there as quick as I possibly can. Heal myself, open up the container, collect the lead, and make the radiation suit. Crisis averted. All the radiation is gone. Now that we don't have to worry about radiation in the waters, we can explore other areas that we couldn't before. Stuck amongst the weeds in this mushroom biome, we stumbled across this. Looks like a steering wheel, but it's the Cyclops bridge fragment. One piece we need to be able to make of Cyclops, which is basically a big submarine. I also found a moon pool fragment. I just need to find one more and then we can make it. Day nine and it's time to start using some of the new blueprints we learned from the island. First, I placed this multi-purpose room on one of the sides of our cylinder shaft. Look at this, we have so much space. I then placed a couple glass windows out so I could enjoy the ocean scenery. Then I placed out a foundation so that I could add on an exterior grow bed so we can plant, well, stuff. Hey, it's that jellyfish thingy. Now that we can make a moon pool, I went ahead and made a moon pool. <laughs> if you're unfamiliar what a moon pool is, it's basically a place that I can dock my seamoth. Early morning of day 10, I enter my base and realize that we have a problem. Realizing that my oxygen is running quite low, I head to the surface to get some more oxygen, this time with plenty of time to spare. So to generate some more power, I need to make a solar panel. I quickly go and harvest a couple resources to be able to make that, and then slap a solar panel straight on the roof of our moon pool. And just like that, our power has been restored. With our base fully functional, I went back out to go and explore the ocean. And in a strange new biome, I found a new resource, Ruby. And also discovered that if I stab one of these marshmallow looking things, I get the bulb bush sample, which I believe I could either eat it or I could plant it in my exterior grow bed back at base. I spotted another crash ship, but unfortunately, it's a little bit too deep for us to be able to get to right now. Then when I turned around, I spotted this strange alien like building. Oh, what is this? Oh, we got an island! This building here seems like it's going to be quite crucial to the story. And of course, new island means new explorations. Although we discovered a new island, I wasn't quite ready to be here right now. I had some other plans in mind. But as I left, I spotted one of those things. Please stay away, sir. Please stay away, sir. Oh, is it coming towards me? No, no. What, what is it doing? Now, after that crazy moment, I'm pretty sure I have to go and clean my undies. Day 11, and we're at our fabricator. Fabricating this high-capacity oxygen tank. And now we can last longer where it matters. Uh, under the water. Under the water, that is. Back out in the ocean, exploring some more. Oh, oh we're screwed. We're dead, we're dead, we're dead. Oh, no. No. 
No, go away, go away. <laughs> oh my god. And that was our first encounter with a Reaper Leviathan. I can tell you now, I need a fresh pair of underwear after that. If it wasn't obvious, I was right next to the crashed Aurora. I went in to explore a little bit just to see what we can kind of find. As I came to the surface, I noticed there was a little ramp here and it looks like we can walk along this. Oh, there's those stupid crabs here again. I followed the pathway of destruction all the way up until we made it to this area. Oh, the doorway looks like it's on fire. Oh, there's a fire extinguisher. Sweet. Time for Fireman Sam to come out blast away this fire once i put out all the fires further in i discovered this pda and a propulsion cannon fragment oh another fire into a room upon entering this next room i found another pda a data terminal and uh well yeah that was pretty much it for now i knew that i didn't have all the tools that i needed to venture further into the aurora just yet i needed to collect a laser cutter and a propulsion cannon and unfortunately i don't have that yet we're just gonna have to leave for now and come back when we do one other thing i didn't remember to take with me when i was exploring was uh food and water as you can see now i'm dying from lack of fluids which is strange on a planet full of water our base is right there will we make it we have a slither of health left mm, guess not i plan on heading out to explore the ocean to try and find the blueprints that i'm gonna need to be able to further explore the aurora but because i learned a pretty harsh lesson before this time i'm gonna go stocked with a lot of food and water day 13 we head on out to try and find some of these blueprints this is where i discover a brand new biome this is like floating islands in the middle of the ocean and then i stumble across some more of the aurora's debris prawn suit drill arm i don't have a prawn suit yet but we guess we're gonna have a drill arm this crash ship doesn't have exactly what we're after but it does have some pretty cool pieces that i assume that we're going to use quite a bit later on mainly for the prawn suit just outside of the ship we found a creature decoy blueprint back in the red grassy biome another crash ship we open up this door to find perfect we've now found the laser cutter the one thing we need to be able to explore further through the aurora boom there we go we've now made ourselves a laser cutter and since we had already found the propulsion cannon back at the aurora i made that as well before leaving i felt like a nice hot cup of coffee yeah you can make coffee in this game apparently now it's time for us to head back on into the aurora we had already explored the administration area so this time we went down to the left uh, okay so to get through here i need this propulsion gun pick that up yeah you guys basically get it we need a propulsion gun to be able to get through this little obstacle here and then we'll met with a keypad we just had to search through our pda to see exactly where the code is i just had to filter through some things to be able to find out where it is cargo bay code notes to self cargo bay code 1454 now that i finally figured out the code i put it in so we could open up our door and we made our way into another destroyed room it was completely on fire again so we put it all out fireman sam here we come this room didn't hold much but it did have an entrance way down looks like we have to go swimming i jumped on into the water and then this happened oh what is that thing please get off me then i found a door that we could finally use our laser cutter on this was more exciting than it might look another room that's completely on fire so yeah after a quick scan we got one piece of the prawn suit i don't know why they do all four pieces when it's already all in this one area just give it to us with the first one i then went to the next set of rooms which was the living quarters and i was happy to find some water so i drank it there was also some nutrient blocks which basically look like weird muesli bars they don't actually look that tasty oh look a cabin door with a pin code on it just gonna have to search through our notes once again to see if we can find the pin code aha sweet offer there we go come by cabin 1869 <laughs> get it can i say that we found something of interest in this room only unless you find a PDA and a double bed interesting. But surely the captain's quarters will have something interesting. The only thing is, I spent like 10 minutes looking through all my notes trying to find the code. And uh, I guess we haven't learned it yet. Lucky for us, Google's a thing. So yeah, we gained access. Claimed another PDA and we learned the blueprints to the Neptune escape rocket. I guess that's going to be our path off this planet. We made it pretty far. It's time for us to head on out. Then I realized that there was another room that we haven't ventured through. It's called the Seamoth Room. Just got to repair this first and then we should be able to enter. This room was exactly what we thought it would be. It was just full of Seamoth fragments and a PDA. But it did come with the Seamoth Depth Module Mark 1. This allows us to modify our Seamoth so we can dive a little bit deeper quite a good find if you ask me i then found another area that was blocked off by fire i thought i'd done all the exploring but i guess i hadn't this entire room was like a reactor engine thing that we had to go and repair there are tons of these little holes and a uh, couple leeches that we had to deal with at this moment of editing this video i realized uh i didn't actually have to wear my radiation suit no longer i thought the radiation was always going to be around so i kind of wear it for a long time with all of that complete we could finally exit the aurora access upgrades yeah yo we can now go to 300 meters we arrived safely at base so i made a locker so we could store all the spoils from our adventure day 16 we got a rather creepy message from our radio 
Translated broadcast. Nine new biological subjects designated. Now, I have no idea what that was, or, and I really don't want to find out. But we do get a ping to come to LifePod 13, which is located here amongst all the mushroom biome area kind of thing. It was pretty deep, but we did scan this modification station fragment and got a new blueprint. With some further exploration into the depths of this crazy game, I found a new resource that I had not discovered yet. Looks like jelly candy kind of things. Unsure what that resource was, we just continued on to LifePod 19. And at this location, we found a highly valuable blueprint. Oh, ultra high capacity tank. What the hell? They look like dancing penises. Day 17, while exploring deeper than we ever have before, I just so happened to stumble across some debris that led me to a larger piece of the ship. And if we see a broken ship like this, that means there's typically some juicy, juicy blueprints. Cyclops depth module. Oh, that's a good score. Oh, is this something? Scanner room fragment. We already have this, but I'll scan it anyway. It was quite dark, so it was hard to find the entrance into this big part of the ship. Oh, there it is. I dove straight in looking for some juicy blueprints. I didn't have a torch yet, so I just used my sea glide as a torch. We laser cut through a door. I picked up this PDA, and that's when I realized I had made a mistake. Yeah, I'm kind of lost in this ship, and I don't know how to get out. Oh, frick, oh, frick, oh, frick, fuck, 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 Yeah, so I kind of ran out of oxygen. That means our sea moth is quite far away, and we lost quite a few things that was in our inventory. I really had no other choice but to grab our sea glide and head on back to where we died. Once we arrived back, that's when I realized when you're at this kind of depth, your oxygen runs out a lot quicker than normal. All right, let's see if we can get our stuff back. We eventually got all of our stuff back, so I can dare say that this was a successful trip. And to make things even better, we got the final fragment we needed to be able to craft a Cyclops. Yes, I can make a Cyclops. Day 18, and we made it back to our base nice and safe. Well, somewhat. Our sea moth is uh, a little bit beat up, but we can fix it. Look at all that juicy loot from the ocean. Gotta love it. Since we've gathered a few resources and we're starting to make some decent progress, I figured it was time for us to upgrade our base a little bit. Add some more pieces on, you know? Uh, what are those weird noises? So the structural integrity of our base right now is kind of busted. Uh, I think our base is broken. But because I'm a complete idiot, I actually thought it was because we were low on power. So yeah, I added all these solar panels on, not realizing that's not the problem. Don't worry though, I did soon figure out that I needed to put these reinforcements on to try and fix the problem. And then of course I had to go through the base and repair all the little holes. Hold it was on. quite the relief to see the water draining out of this place. So then it was back to us upgrading our base. I wanted to add a large room onto this space. Why? Because the aim of this space was to kind of look like this. The only problem with this creative base design is, uh, I broke it again. Yes, I, I broke our penile. Don't worry though, a couple more reinforcements and some hole repairs. We were good to go and the water was draining out of our penile. And with such an upgrade, I had to make sure I rearrange everything so it kind of fits a lot better and nicer. I mean, after all, we have this large room, we might as well use it. In one of the ball sacks, I decided to make an indoor grow room. In the other nut sack, I put down an aquarium. And to make sure our penile stays stiff, we made sure to add some extra reinforcements. And right at the tip, I placed a hatch so we had easy access in and out. Day 21 and our base is looking good. So I figured it was time to go out and do some more exploring. But as we ventured into the deep, we started hearing these noises. Oh crap. Oh, oh crap. Crap. No, 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 no. No, get away, get away, get away, get away, get away, get away. No. Well, yes, that was a very close call. From there, though, we did discover LifePod 12. Nothing really exciting to discover here except this PDA, I guess. I don't know what it is about this day, but it just wasn't our day. This is why. Freaking ugly four eyed thing. It's gonna break. Oh, it's gonna break me. Oh, it broke me. It broke my sea moth. And just like that, we lost a sea moth. I then had to make the shameful, shameful swim back to base. But I did add some fish to our little aquarium we had here. So I guess that's kind of exciting for today. And I placed down this modification station down. This is another crafting bench that allows us to modify and upgrade some of our items and equipment that we use. Ultra high capacity tank. Yes, I'll be getting one of them. Cyclops death module, repulsion cannon. Yeah, straight away I basically made the ultra high capacity tank. Now we can last ages underwater. And I couldn't not make the thermo blade. Who doesn't want a fire knife? Day 22, I crafted some bleach. Why? Well, so I could drink it. Yeah, it sounds kind of strange, but if you craft bleach, you can then craft disinfected water with it and drink it. And I suppose we should uh, replace our sea moth that got broken by that leviathan. I also built this. 
yeah it's a scanner room it uh well does exactly what it says it does it, it, it scans things it has cameras that you can control and kind of have a look around you know the local area in and you can scan for different items and things that kind of show up on this list this is it in action real thrilling stuff if you ask me so i can't currently make a depth module for the seamoth since it kind of got destroyed and that was the only one that we found earlier from the aurora but thanks to some uh, google searching i have a location to go to to pick up something important i had to find this wreck so i could find this little data dock thingy aha juicy vehicle upgrade console day 24 i did some home like renovations i kind of really wasn't happy with the layout of our base the moon pool was just so far away from our central base scanner room you're gonna have to move and mr moon pool you can go right here on the side of our large room there's still a space for you scanner room you, you, you can just come here all right let's see if this kind of all works Welcome aesthetically pleasingly you can go over here that's better oh that created like two entrances nice and now we can fit in the vehicle upgrade console with the vehicle upgrade console we can create upgrades for our seamoth or a prawn suit that we might later get and you can customize the vehicle that's currently docked in there and this is what i came up with we named her mia myself and all my subscribers love mia i then went ahead and created some upgrades for our seamoth all right let's put these in upgrades so we got the storage module depth module and the hull reinforcement our seamoth is a beast Day 25, we just basically spent the entire day just going out collecting resources. I really wanted to stock up so we didn't have to do spontaneous resource runs. At least this way we had most of the stuff sitting at base. Oh yeah, that's a pretty nice haul so far. Well, some of it at least. Day 26 in the purple mushroom biome, we found another piece of the Aurora. Hey, Mr. Electric Ely thingy, uh, can you please fuck off? In this piece of the ship, we did find something useful an alien containment and a water filtration machine which i'm sure will be very useful with further exploration deeper and deeper we go i was feeling confident but then i was reminded this isn't our planet and not our ocean holy crap he's freaking right there oh my god he's gonna kill us again oh that looks interesting collect some of that put it all in the storage we are good baby with a bunch of new resources on hand that we just gathered from a big exploration i was able to craft the seamoth depth module mark three yeah baby now we can go real deep yeah see that at the top of the middle screen there 900 meters deep this will basically open up a whole new world for us but for now i remembered i had the alien containment unit and i really wanted to see what it looked like in our base if you put it in the large room it takes up even more space which means you can have even more aliens in it i kept moving the alien containment around to different parts of the base just to see what it looked like in other areas eventually i settled on having it in the large room after all we had all this space we might as well use it and of course i placed a couple of eggs and the fish that i had gathered along the ways as well as a plant that i had picked earlier day 28 and it's time to dive deeper than we ever have before and in our seamoth there's a little shortcut we can go to to get there this little crack that you might have seen us go through earlier which leads us to this abandoned base aha uh -huh, we made it this is really pretty this abandoned base came abundant with some new things for us to be able to scan like this wall planter a spotlight and we found two pdas that i'm sure is very important to the story but uh again i, I didn't really read them moving on from that little base there i found pieces of another wrecked base Seems like there's pretty good evidence that there used to be humans on this planet. I then found our way out. I don't know how, but you know, there's a hole there. So we just went out it. But really, we're on a mission. We want to go deep, deeper than we ever have before. Eventually, it led us to this area. Oh, dude, this is like a toxic lake. Underwater lake. That's kind of weird. I don't really know. Oh, dude, we're over 600 meters deep what in the lord's mama is that it's safe to say that we need to avoid some certain things down here it's kind of unsettling to see that this is a massive alien rib cage whatever killed this big mama i don't want to meet it wait a second is that the skull is that the freaking skull the deeper we went the more curious i got we even ran into these cool glowing manta rays but yes as you can see there was also an alien place down here is that a building at first i wasn't sure if this was a building or just one big cube looking thing well, that's probably a sign for us to go in. Eventually, we found the entrance. This alien building seemed all beaten up and destroyed. But hey, curiosity always gets the best of us, and uh, we have to explore it. Even though I'm pretty much pooping my pants right now. Okay, yeah, that, that was creepy. I then discovered this room in this alien fortress, and uh, this is when things got really creepy. Since I was down here, I figured I'd scan some of these warpers. For some reason, I don't remember why, I think I was told to do a self-scan. 
themselves can't complete. Holy crap, what the frick is that? Oh my god. I got alien herpes. So yeah, looks like these aliens gave me herpes. Such a good time. And with that, I think it's time that we leave this place and make our way back to base. We did get a fair few interesting resources from this trip. So that's a good thing, right? Fast forward a little bit further and look, we, our aquarium's looking great. We even have one of those brain fishy things and a chlamydia dugong. The craziest thing happened though, while we're just chilling at base, this happened. What the, what the frick's happening right now? Is that the thing that gave me herpes? I'm feeling quite violated right now. What the frick are you? How rude. Day 30, I found that this side of the mountain was rich with resources, specifically lithium, which is kind of used in quite a few recipes that we kind of need right now. It's that mountainside kind of close to the mushroom biome, if you ever want to find it in game. I also remembered that we had this water filtration system that we could place in. Trying to find a good place for it to go was quite a difficult task. Eventually, we settled for this area. I mean, it's empty. You might as well, right? But without realizing it, I think adding that water filtration system did this. Oh crap! Warning: emergency power only. Oh no, we ran out of power. That's bad. Yes, I need to figure out this whole power situation. But first, I need to get some oxygen into me. Damn, the aurora looks kind of cool at night. Before fixing the power situation, I needed to be adequately hydrated. Oh look, the power has returned. No, not really. The solar panels only work during the day. Obviously, they're solar panels, but they drain at night. I had a solution to this problem though. I just needed a ton of resources to be able to solve this problem, but my ADD got the better of me. Instead, we crafted this. Yeah, I made a Cyclops. I mean, look at that thing. If you're unsure what it is, it's basically a moving base. A massive submarine that can just go pretty damn deep and uh, carry anything you want, including either a prawn suit or a sea moth. All right, what do we have in here? All right, down here, lower deck, launch bay, random room. Oh, and then this is this is the, the bridge. Ah, yes, we can customize our Cyclops. So yeah, of course we can customize our Cyclops and make it any color that we like. Of course, I had to name it. So I named it Angela, after one of my favorite actresses. Having this thing was cool though, but driving it was a whole nother level. I, I couldn't figure it out for a long time. Day 32 and the sun was down. Oh yeah. But we had fresh water, so that's a good thing. Large filtered water. Oh, we got the filtered water from this thing. I suppose I should probably work on this whole power situation. Thanks to our earlier farm, we had all the resources we needed pretty much. So I could build this, the nuclear reactor. Oh yeah, baby, we have a nuclear reactor. It uses nuclear rods to generate energy. Okay, 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 okay. So we need a nuclear rod to be able to power this thing. Again, luckily I had the resources on hand, so I could quickly make one. Right, it says it's inactive. Boom, baby, active. We now have power. Can we just take a moment to appreciate Angela here? I mean, look at that beauty. I then went back to the deep parts of this map to go and collect some of the rare resources down here. I wanted to stock up just in case we needed to, you know, make some things that we needed these resources for. Holy crap, dude. That's a dead reaper leviathan. That's creepy yet really cool looking. Day 33, I made some minor base improvements. Yeah, I didn't really want our base to fall apart like I had before. This way we didn't have to worry about it in the future. Then I returned to the vehicle base so we could craft this. The almighty prawn suit. It fell into the deep parts of the water. Oh yeah, baby, things are looking good. We have a prawn suit. Wow, this is kind of funky. Can I get the prawn suit into that? Hey, we did it, we did it. Day 34 in the darkness of the night, we took our Cyclops out for a little bit of a spin, but uh, I might've forgotten to bring some water for us to drink. Oh no, that's gonna be a problem. We need to hydrate. Eventually our failure to hydrate led to this. Yeah, so we died. Once we finally respawned, the alarms were going off like crazy. Um, so what's going on? Looks fine. Oh, okay, yeah, crap, our engine's on fire. Fireman Sam, here we go. Put this baby out. Yeah, fire, thank you, thank you for telling me now. Yeah, freaking hell. I ended up taking the Cyclops back to base and then jumping in our prawn suit. See what it could really do. Oh yeah, I added the mining drill arm onto the prawn suit as well. Yeah, uh, we could drill the lid there. What if we get heaps? Do we get heaps? Just a little bit. It's safe to say we got some pretty decent amount of resources from the prawn suit. Oh yeah, I decided to place this on our base too, so we can look up. 
into the water. Don't really know what I was thinking with this, but I thought it would look a lot cooler than that. I mean, it kind of looks cool, but I, I don't know. A battery charge is probably better for us right now anyway. Day 35, we played a little bit of Pimp My Cyclops. First, we placed down a fabricator. Then I placed down a vehicle upgrade module. Nope, that's a lie. I didn't do that. It, we, we know that that doesn't work. I just had to decide what I was going to upgrade. I mean, the Cyclops death module was probably the most obvious choice for the first thing to upgrade. But since we couldn't upgrade the prawn suit on our Cyclops, we had to customize it at our base in the moon pool. Obviously, I went with its traditional red colors, and then I named this beauty Lisa and again another one of my most favorite actresses finishing this day off i loaded up the seamoth in our cyclops and prepared myself to go and venture further than we ever have before in the cyclops of course as we were diving deeper and deeper i heard a rather scary noise and this would change the outcome of the next couple minutes eventually we got away from that reaper leviathan so we started going as deep as we possibly could things got rather scary though as we couldn't see anything fireman sam came through with the goods and put out some of the fires so yeah we died and uh if you haven't already noticed i think we died in a kind of bug i tried clearing the bug by jumping in our prawn suit once i exited the prawn suit it looked like it worked, but as soon as I jumped out of the water, the bug was back. We are now riding our sea glide as if it was a sea moth. But hey, it looks like we have a cool and unique way to be able to enjoy this game. It was pretty cheap, so of course, I crafted up another sea moth. Day 37 and the bug is gone. I had to log in and out. That kind of worked. But now that we have our sea moth back, we need to get its upgrades back to where they were previously. Oh, will you look at that? A creature egg. A side quest that I've given myself is I want to try and collect as many of these creatures for our little aquarium that we've got going at base. And so far, our little aquarium is starting to look pretty full and packed. And now we have all the basic upgrades for our Seamoth. I just can't quite go as deep as 900 meters like I could before. I need a couple more resources to be able to do that. As you can see here though, there's a beacon that will lead us to the destroyed Cyclops. So against my better judgment, we're going to head on over there and see if we can retrieve some stuff from our Cyclops. Unfortunately, it's a little bit deeper than 500 meters. I guess we're going to have to go on foot. Well, I mean like swim by ourselves with no safety of the Seamoth. Yeah, that was a pretty stupid move for us to be able to go down there and uh, die straight away. But now we have to go and try and retrieve our Seamoth. And all I have right now is the Sea Glide to get us there. We retrieved our Seamoth without a hitch. But as soon as I got in there, I hightailed it out of there as quick as possible. I didn't want to wait around and see that ghost leviathan again. We made it back to base safe and sound. And I think the most appropriate thing for us to do right now is customize our Seamoth back to where it was before. We still named her Mia, but this time Mia 2. Day 38, I was basically just completely lost. I had no kind of goal or plan for this day. I just kept searching around to see if I could find something new that I haven't discovered yet. And as luck would have it, we kind of did. We found this little crater in the middle of the ocean that had this little divot or cave in the side of it that looked like it was inhabited by aliens at one point. I didn't have a tablet on me at the time, so there was kind of no point sticking around here. And I'm probably going to forget where this area is later. Day 39, I got to crafting some things that I have never crafted before, like one of these beacons and a grav trap. Because who doesn't want to try out a thing called a grav trap? That sounds cool as hell. I also crafted this prawn suit grappling arm. Now we're going to have some extra Spider-Man mobility in our prawn suit. Grav trap successfully tested and it seems to work pretty well. It's a cool little machine, I guess. But now I really want to test out our prawn suit. Having this mobility means we get to get some of this juicy, juicy ore. I'm loving it. We literally stocked up on as much as we could possibly find. Well, until our prawn suit was full at least. Day 40, I came to the realization that probably the most valuable resource in this game, titanium. It's literally in like 95% of all the crafting recipes and you always need a ton of it. And it seems to be the one thing that I always run out of. It's probably time for us to upgrade Mia too and make sure she can get real deep. With this newfound ability of being able to dive deep, I went out and set some of these beacons down. This way I could find some of the POIs in the map. A little bit easier at least. The first beacon we placed down was here on the floating islands. So of course I named this beacon, well, for floating islands. And for some stupid reason, I decided to head on back down near the Cyclops that was destroyed earlier. Uh, yeah, I know it's a stupid move but I did it. It kind of seemed like the Leviathan ran away, so I thought I had a free run down to go see the Cyclops again. Oh, a poor Cyclops. Oh, wow. We're already... Holy crap! Oh, this was a bad idea. I knew it was... Oh, no. I guess the Subnautica gods were looking out for us because we got away with one health on the Seamoth. Literally, one more hit, we were dead. After a scary engagement like that, I decided to come up to this island so we could do a little bit of exploring here. I mean, it's probably important. It has a unique cave system that seems to have a lot of resources around the walls. And interestingly enough, some alien artifacts, like this purple tablet. So many alien- Holy, what the heck is that? Yeah, so we found a really interesting uh, alien kind of area. I don't know what this is, 
Uh, we'll, we'll come back and check it out later. Since I picked up a purple tablet, I ran over to this and placed it in there. All right, get in there, buddy. Should take the force field down, I assume. In this alien building, we came across a few of these ion cubes and this station that we could download some data. But it was in an unknown language. It was probably Chinese or something. We have to interface with a building? Sounds kind of intimate. Hmm, mysterious thing. Oh, what's that? Oh, yeah, it's like an elevator. Well, aliens have really mastered this technology, huh? Oh, swimming pool. This place has an indoor swimming pool. The alien swimming pool seems to lead out back to the ocean. So we didn't need to use one of those purple tablets anyway. We could have just got in this way. We have some more places to explore in this building anyway, so we'll continue on. Oh, it's a Pokeball. Alien device. Let's scan it, see what it does. Doomsday device, holy crap. Uh, hmm, yeah, okay. Next up, we encountered another force field. So we placed the purple tablet in that and walked straight through it. Then we were faced with this thing. We are told to interact with it. I feel like this could be a bad idea, but hey, let's press the alien button. Oh, it's trapped me. Oh, what is that? What is that? Oh, is that a needle? Oh my gosh, we just got, it. what the frick? Oh, yeah, that's right. We have herpes. I was unsure what happened just then, so I did it again. Just wanted to try and get another hit of the whatever that was. I then decided to exit this building out the swimming pool. Kind of curious on where this led. And that's when we met a warper. Wanted to try and scan him. He killed me. Yay. Back on our trusty sea glide. We had to make our way back to the sea moth to go pick up Mia too. And this looks like a good place to place down another beacon. This was in the glowing weed area. So we named this beacon Glowing Weeds. Yeah, yeah, it's real original. And since we we're pretty close to the deep cave area and we had an empty inventory, figured we better stock up on some of these rarer resources like this. Oh yeah, that's that, what is it called? Uh, some kind of crystal sulfur thing. Then I saw in the distance this big glowing purple tree. This is the area I haven't explored yet. Maybe because it goes deeper than 900 meters, which is the max for our sea moth. But if we have our sea glide and we just go out on our own, we can go as deep as we want. It was interesting to see all these ore nodes here too. We're definitely gonna have to come back here in our prawn suit eventually. I then scanned the ghost ray. Why? Because, well, because I can. Turns out you can scan the big purple tree too. It's called the giant cave tree. Real original name, Subnautica. It's a good one. On our way out of the deep, deep cave, I stopped off at this abandoned base. See if we could pick up some blueprints that we have yet to discover. It was a good move too, because we picked up this. The swim charge fins. Uh-huh, you can't get me, you can't get me, stupid brain, scrabby jellyfish thing. What the hell even is that? I left the abandoned base to try and kite this brain fish away. It kept doing that electric move. I don't even know what that is. And once I did, I went back on in. See if I could scan some more blueprints. It kept doing that attack though. Wait, is it attacking my Seamoth? What is it doing? It is like even more aggressive than it was before. This is where things got quite interesting. I need to try and find a way out of this cave and back to base. Luckily, there was a hole just close to where we were that led us straight to the surface. If we didn't have that large tank on us, we probably would have drowned then. This also seems like a good place to place down another beacon. We're going to call it Go Deep Here. But since we lost our Seamoth and our Cyclops earlier, it's probably a good time to replace either one of them. I started with the Cyclops and you know I had to customize this Cyclops straight away. If it wasn't obvious by now, I named it Angela 2. Before heading out again in the Cyclops, I wanted to make sure I had all the necessary upgrade modules that I could need. And of course, I had to pimp out the interior of my Cyclops. Since it was new, we basically had to start again. I did have a big brain moment though. I placed down this indoor grow bed and planted some of these bulbo trees so that we had an infinite supply of food and water. They grow that quick though, you know, at least you never know. You could be stuck out in the wild and not have to worry about food and water. After loading up my prawn suit, I loaded up the decoy launcher with some creature decoys and started heading towards the go deep here beacon. I got a little lost along the way and uh, yeah. Oh frick! Oh my god, no, 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 we just got the Cyclops. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Put the shield up. <laughs> we got away, son. Heading out anywhere in this Cyclops is scary. I mean, look at that. That's a, a Reaper Leviathan. Dude. At this point, I was pretty lost, but we ended up finding the glowing weed forest area, and I know that this leads to the entry of the cave at some point. Yeah, I gave up on trying to find the way down to the cave. But I have an idea on how to be able to navigate to get there better next time. But first, I need some of that moist, moist lubricant so I can build myself another sea moth. Yay, sea moth number three? Or is it four? I don't know. But of course, painfully, I have to replace all the modules once again. I'm going to be traveling light this time. 
just using a depth module and a storage container. We started day 48 out by crafting some beacons, then heading on out in the Seamoth to try and find a good place that the Cyclops can enter the cave system. It was kind of tricky because every entry to the cave system that we found had some sort of obstacles, whether it be a hostile creature or some trees or weeds. Like this, this is a cave hole, but I don't like the chances of getting the Cyclops through it. Whoa, what is that big mamma jamma? Curiosity definitely got the better of me. I had to find out what these things are and what they do. And maybe find out if they're hostile. Sea Treader. Man, it makes some weird ass noises. Sea Treader Leviathan. Is that poop? It's alien poop. I have no idea what the alien poop is used for, but I'm going to hold on to it and try and find out later. Back to the task at hand. We're trying to find a place to be able to place these beacons down so we can get our Cyclops all the way into this cave nice and safely. Hey, I know where we are. Oh, the big brain dude's there. Oh, it's, what's that? Oh, it's like an EMP blast. I'm literally stuck in the water. Let's get out of the way. I eventually found a suitable space for the Cyclops to be able to enter the cave. There's this long, deep cavern that just goes straight from the surface of the water, straight down to the cave entrance. I placed one beacon down right at the front of the cave entrance. Of course, naming this beacon cave entrance. And then another beacon right at the top near the surface water. And I called this one dive, 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 because this is where we should dive 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 confident with our plan i headed on back to our base crafted up some essentials like this creature decoy and loaded my prawn suit into the cyclops all prepared we started heading off to the dive 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 beacon in our cyclops and this is the chasm that i was talking about earlier if it wasn't obvious i kind of suck at piloting the cyclops so i turned the lights off because maybe that'll help Ooh. Oh, what's, oh, no, he's on me. He's on me. He's on me. And I'm, I'm thinking I've crashed into stuff. What do you want, Mr. Squid Brain? I then dropped a creature decoy, hoping for the best. But I still need to try and get out of this little predicament we're in, because I think I'm stuck between this rock. We got hit with another creature attack. This time, I initiated the shield generator. Hopefully, this will keep him away. After all the craziness of those creatures, I wanted to go check to see if we had any damage on our ship. Everything looked fine, but our power cells were running kind of low. I had one spare, and this got us to 23% power, which I don't think is enough to even get us back. That's okay though, I'm just going to have to make do for now. I quickly attacked the Bulbo tree so I could get a little bit of hydration in me, and then launched the prawn suit so we could go and gather some juicy, juicy resources. There's so many nodes down here that I couldn't help myself by gathering as many things as I could. After all, having the prawn suit with some storage, and the Cyclops being able to hold a lot, I'm not leaving empty-handed. There was one resource down here that I did want to gather, that you can only find in this particular area. Area. Is that it? Yes, we found it. Nickel. Nickel ore. I'm going to farm the shit out of you. Yes, nickel ore. It's an important resource that we can use to craft some modules for our Cyclops and our prawn suit. After a juicy, juicy farm, I went to load back into the Cyclops. But this is when we ran into our first major problem. The door wouldn't open. I thought it was bugged at first, but no. The Cyclops is completely out of power. Zero percent. Even though we're deep in the ocean, I quickly jumped inside Lisa Ann to get our last breath of oxygen and then used my sea glide to hopefully swim all the way out of this cave obviously trying to avoid all the dangers that come with this cave too will we make it out of here alive i have no idea the answer is yes we made it out with 42 seconds of oxygen left to go too easy baby now we just gotta get home we made it back to base with one thing on our mind welcome aboard captain creep vines Yes, that, that's what we're thinking of that whole time. We need a bunch of these and a bunch of acid mushrooms. I bet you're curious why. I mean, if it wasn't obvious, they're the main ingredient in creating batteries and then turning batteries into power cells. Once I was satisfied with the amount I needed, it was time to head on back down into the scary, scary cave all by ourselves with no protection of a sea moth or a cyclops. Swimming around with a sea glide and then seeing that beast straight up there means I'm going to need a fresh pair of undies straight after this trip. 60 seconds left of oxygen and we made it back to Lisa Ann. I love getting inside Lisa Ann. Oh yeah, now we can replace these power cells, baby. We filled up all of our power cells and even had one spare left over. And I mean, we're still down here, so we might as well collect some more resources while we're here. The whole day on day 52, I pretty much just spent the entire time farming and collecting and sorting out all the resources on the Cyclops. I ended up having to add some more storage lockers because we had so many resources that we had gathered. And if you're wondering why it's so dark, it's because I turned the lights off. I didn't want to use any more power than I had to, which I don't know if it's really a thing, but you know, it, it might be. Day 53 with a full load of resources it was time to head on back to base hopefully we're trying not to die and get killed by the leviathans hmm that guy's kind of close let's drop a decoy just in case oh did it work that might have worked on our way out to the surface because of my amazing piloting skills i uh yeah i crashed into this 
Looks like another piece of the Aurora. Even though we had a successful trip down in the deep, I couldn't help myself when I saw this quartz node. I had to farm it. And we ended day 53 successfully making it back to base. Day 54, and I'm heading on out to go and collect a blueprint that I really desperately need at this point of the game. What the heck? Has that stalker got my camera? This particular blueprint is found on top of this mushroom tree. How do I know that already? Well, Google. G Google's how I know. And what exactly am I looking for? Well, if you're familiar with the game, you probably already know. But if you're not, I'm looking for that. That thing right there, the power cell charger. This way, I don't have to worry about crafting new power cells all the time. I can just keep recharging the ones that we have. And I also plan on creating an outpost down in the deep area that we can kind of just keep recharging power cells and now with a little bit of tinkering with some crafting i have successfully crafted a power cell charger i immediately returned back to our cyclops took out all the power cells that i could get and began charging them uh, we only had one power cell charger at this time so it might be a bit of a slow process while we wait for the power cells to charge i figured i'd upgrade my prawn suit by placing a depth module on it which uses nickel that we had gathered earlier the next upgrade that i made was the prawn suit jump jet upgrade I then placed them all in there, as well as an extra storage container. You can never have too much storage with the prawn suit. After all, you're basically just a mining rig. Speaking of storage, we then added some lockers into the Cyclops as well. Day 55, a really interesting day. We pretty much just stared at the wall watching these power cells charge. Day 56, I woke up and thought to myself, let's make a torpedo system for the Seamoth. And once I installed the upgrade module, I needed to go collect some chlamydia. Yes, yeah, I need to go collect the, the gas from these chlamydia dugongs. And you might be thinking, Aaron, why do you need chlamydia so bad? Well, if it isn't obvious, aboard, Captain. we need the chlamydia to make some torpedoes. There's actually two variations of torpedoes. There's the gas torpedoes that we use the chlamydia for, and there's vortex torpedoes that works like a gravitational kind of thing. We, of course, made both and loaded them all in. Now, usually I'd go and play around with the torpedoes, but I had a Cyclops that needed some maintenance, mainly just filling up the power cells and making sure that they're all fully charged and ready to go. I then decided to go check on the radio. Turns out we had a message. Not sure if it was an alien or a dubstep DJ. And then we started heading on back to the deep, deep cave. This time with the intention of diving deeper than we ever have before. We passed by the pretty glowing tree and dove down and through this waterfall, which led us into Lava Lake. I wasn't able to come here before because our prawn suit couldn't handle it. And I don't have the required wetsuit to be able to swim around here. You, you kind of burn to death if you swim around here. But my aim of this trip was to jump in my prawn suit, launch it in search of one resource, this blue crystal. I believe it's called Kyrite. Kyanite? I, I don't know. It's a, it's a blue crystal. This is probably the most end game resource since you can only get it at depths over a thousand meters. And it's what we need to be able to upgrade the Cyclops to go even further down than we've ever been before. So I drilled a bunch out basically to make sure I didn't have to do multiple trips. And we found some beautiful quartz here too. I love quartz. It's the best resource. I think it's pretty safe to say we're stocked up on Kyronite. Now that's my cue to leave Lava Lake, but we're not leaving the entire area just yet because I have one more thing I need to do. But before I could do that, I need to collect some resources real quick, like some lithium and a bunch of titanium. I already had some copper in my prawn suit from earlier. Yeah, I wanted to build a deep outpost. All right, we have the multi-purpose room down. We're going to put one little tube in. Going to need a hatch to get in and out. And one more multi-purpose room. I built two separate multi-purpose rooms because one room is going to have our nuclear reactor to power the entire thing. It's kind of overkill for a place like this, but I'm pretty sure if I have this down here, I won't have to worry about power at all. As I swam towards my Cyclops, I noticed it had a little slug on it. A lava lava. So I scanned it to try and find out what exactly it is. Behavior attracted to energy sources of all kinds. Draws energy from its prey to survive. Does that mean it's sucking the, like, the power out of our Cyclops? Die, you little punk! Our Cyclops was riddled with these little freaking annoying worms. Anyway, it was important that we set up our little outpost. Power cell charges are probably the most important thing for down here. But it didn't matter. As soon as I came back out to swim, these little lava lavas were out here again. I swear they multiplied since the last time I was out here. And one's got freaking herpes. There was even one on our prawn suit. Like, dude. We also confirmed that the little punks drain the power out of the Cyclops. Luckily, we had a ton of spare power cells. These things were relentless. Every time I come out, they were always attached to some part of the Cyclops. I couldn't figure out how to get rid of them all. You know, you think you kill one, but another one just turns up. Doesn't help that the Cyclops is red and they're red too. Maybe that was a bad choice of paint. I did have a theory I wanted to test out. If I use the shield, will it get rid of them? Oh, it worked. Get out of here, you little 
box. I changed the location of my power cell charger and added a second one in. Now that these lava lovers are going to be draining our power cells, I need to make sure we're set. I figured since we're going to spend a lot of time down here, it's probably handy to have a radio down here so we can continue on the main story quest. This radio message goes on for a while and they kind of just talk gibberish and random stuff, but it is actually kind of important. So that's how we would have got the codes for the captain's thing. Day 60, I went out and about collecting all these bladder fish that were down here. Because remember guys, it is very important to stay adequately hydrated. Then I did all the checks on our power cells to make sure we were all fully charged. So we could make the long and tedious ascent back to our main base. Are you guys really surprised though? Like, this is me piloting this thing. Oh, there's still a fire in the cockpit bridge or whatever you call this area. Go out, go out, go out. You can barely breathe. With the fire extinguished, we went back out to repair some of the holes on our ship and continued on back to base. I then unloaded everything that we had gotten from down in the deep and had a look at our modifier to see what we could craft now. Had to also make sure that we replaced the creature decoys that we used. I mean, we did use a lot of them. And then I crafted the Cyclops Depth Module Mark III. Day 62, I crafted up some fiber mesh, which I need to be able to craft synthetic fibers. Also, I could craft this, the Reinforced Dive Suit. This offers protection against the heat down in the lava zone. Since we're feeling so comfortable in our base right now, I figured it was time to decorate it a little bit. Hmm, where can I put the little spaceship? Yeah, underneath the fabricator, that'll do. I then took a moment to craft a repulsion cannon from the modifier. I thought I already had this, but it seems like it's an upgrade to like the repulse thing that we already had. And of course, we had a new toy, so we had to see what it does. Hey, come here, little sand sharky. Yeet. <laughs> Yeet gun acquired. Back in the Cyclops, I added all the upgrades to the prawn suit and to the Cyclops. Day 63, I ventured out to go and collect some fauna, starting with some of these pygmy seeds or the purple marshmallow plants, then explored down in the toxic lake. All right, I've got one of them in the aquarium. Now, if you're wondering, what the hell is this man doing right now? Well, let me explain. A couple days earlier, I crafted this up. Yeah, a foundation and some planter plots. Also, that I could plant some plants really i don't know what half of these plants do but they might come in handy later next i noticed the radio was beeping looks like we're getting off this planet if you see in the top right hand corner there the sunbeam's gonna arrive and pick us up i did have other plans though but it looks like we're gonna have to wait until this timer ticks on down until we can get off the planet while i waited i figured we'd upgrade our scanner room oh yeah it goes in in me if i scan for something it'll show up on the screen let's see if there's any fragments we haven't learned yet i let the scanner do its thing and then we had to wait seemed to work just fine we can see the fragments on our screen now and go and collect them i guess the only problem is all the local fragments were ones that we already had we didn't get anything new 33 more minutes and uh let's test out the torpedoes ah uh, gravity <laughs> i got yeeted as well day 64 while trying to fill in some time i harvested this tiger plant might make a cool little addition to our little planters back at base i then crafted up some green juice aka pollyanna line if that's how you say it as it's a key ingredient for this the seamoth perimeter defense system now no leviathan is going to get our mia 10 minutes remain until we get picked up from the sunbeam so i prepare my inventory for the trip to the rendezvous point then i load into mia 3 and head to the sunbeam landing site in five minutes we should be off this planet i finally arrive at the sunbeam landing site with just over a minute left to go but with 30 seconds left to go the alien building starts to move i think the alien buildings get no erection now it looks like a gun oh no don't come don't come don't come Set thrusters to full. oh no <laughs> yeah so that happened our escape plan has been destroyed guess we're gonna have to find another way off this planet i mean if that was the way off this planet this game would have had a very underwhelming ending so i'm not surprised it happened since the building had moved i went back on in to investigate I was curious to see if, you know, anything had changed on the inside. I arrived back up at the button to get my blood tested once again, and we came out with the same result as before. Nothing had changed. But now I assume that if we can fix ourselves and clear the infection, we can disable that gun and then find a way off this planet. I remembered I had an ion cube on me, and you could put it in this stand here. Unsure what it did, I went ahead and did it. Inserting ion cube. Oh! it hurt us oh the crap hurt us oh it's like a portal now what kind of adventurer would i be if i didn't go through the portal once we got through we came into this strange cave system that i'd never seen before once we made it out i realized we were on the island that we discovered earlier that we got the multi-purpose blueprints and stuff from i had also discovered that there was a planter box here with some chinese potatoes and some marble melon and uh, other stuff so of course i harvested it so i could bring it back to base and we could have some more food and since we had teleported here we were without our sea moth so back in the water with our sea glide we go to try and collect our sea moth and before you say anything yeah yeah i i didn't even think about just teleporting back back through the way we came. I only just realized this now while editing this. 
On the way to go pick up our seamoth, I made a quick stop off so I could plant some of these new plants that we had gathered. Day 67, I started going through our PDA to try and find some clues on what to do next. But turns out I have an immediate issue that I need to try and fix. My base keeps filling up with water. Um, how? Since it kept filling up with water, our hull integrity must be low. But once I placed on some reinforcement, hey, my hull's strong. I'm pretty sure this is a bug or something. We did get a few more bugs along the way after this. And this seemed to only happen every time we left our base. If you guys know what's happening, just hit me in the comments below. I, I don't know. Anyways, we've got a way more important task on our hand. We need to try and find our way off this planet. It's been nice, but it's time to get out of this moistness. Step number one. Let's build this Neptune launch platform. Ooh, let's build the Neptune thingy. Step number two. Build this Neptune gantry. And because we're quite stocked up on resources, building the Neptune gantry was a piece of cake. Baby. Step three, we need to build Neptune boosters. Ooh, yeah, buddy. But uh, yeah, this is where we ran into our first roadblock. Ion power cells. After a quick Google search, I found out to get the ion power cell blueprint, we need to go into the lava zone, like deep into the lava zone. So I grabbed some essentials, mainly purple tablets and ion cubes, and started making our way in our cyclops with our prawn suit towards the deepest parts of this ocean that we've ever been, and the hottest. We're going to use our previously built outpost as, well, an outpost and a kind of base while we're down here. I envision we're going to be here for a while. So I loaded up into my prawn suit and started spider-manning around these caves down here. Now you might have noticed that I'm not actually heading towards the lava zone, but that's because I wanted to head back to this building. For a specific reason, of course. It's safe to say it wasn't really worth it. Except when we left this building, instead of going back the way we came, I realized you could venture deeper through this cave system. And this is when I discovered a hole in the ground that led to the lava zone. Yeah, buddy. Those little lava lakes can kind of mess you up, but that's not the only thing that we have to be worried about. Oh, god damn. What the frick is that? Yeah, so that's another variant of Leviathans. I had no idea if it was passive or aggressive or what it was, but I guess it's always good to stay a little cautious, you know? Hello, big Leviathan. What the frick is that? It could do fireballs underwater? That, that's a thing? This is weird. Things got a little bit crazy down here, but we still need to find this building so we can get this ion battery thing. I had no idea where to look, and we had to keep avoiding this Leviathan. Luckily, this uh, rock formation kind of kept us protected. Oh, and uh, yeah, curiosity got the better of me once again. Hey, I wonder if I can scan this thing. It's not working. Scan! No, can't freaking scan it, stupid freaking creature. I spent this entire day just searching for this little building, only to realize it's in the center of this kind of area. Uh so it's in the middle of like the lava mountain thing we have now arrived at the deepest alien building that we've ever arrived at i just gotta figure out how to get in this thing spider-man i have a really hot knife and i'm not afraid to use it got through this airlock and then discovered through this building it had uh, a weird little strange creature next in this building i discovered a large block of ion cubes at this point i had no idea what i needed to be able to collect it the knife wasn't working. I tried maybe using the laser cutter. Mm, that didn't work either. Moving on, we found another teleporter room. I placed the ion cube in there, but I wasn't quite ready to go through just yet. Because there was another room we had to go through, but I had to place a purple tablet in there to get in. This led us to this. A blue tablet. It's probably important in some way. We'll figure it out soon. Holy crap. There's that voice in my head again. Come to you. What? After hearing a scary voice telling me it needed me to come to it, there's no way I'm going anywhere further without my prawn suit. This next room seemed pretty intense, so after I placed the purple tablet in it, I was a bit cautious before walking in. We hit this data terminal that gave us information to find the primary containment facility. This orange data terminal gave us the blueprints for the ion power cells that we need. Basically, we have everything we need to be able to get off this planet, except one thing. We need to try and disable that big gun that shot down the sunbeam earlier. And I assume by doing that, we need to heal our infection, which uh, I think we need to go and find this person that keeps telling us to come to it. But because I'm a complete idiot when it comes to navigation in deep waters, it took me a very long time to try and figure out how to get to the primary containment facility. Once we finally navigated ourselves out of that mess, we dove deeper into this lava infested cave. Then just as our luck would have it, as we turn this corner, another leviathan. Another one. This Leviathan seemed quite aggressive, and I'm pretty sure it was on our tail this entire time. We had to try and make it into this building as quick as we can. Oh, it's right there. Once we made it through the force field, we were pretty 
safe, I think, from the Leviathan. Deeper in this building, we found some more ion cubes that we could harvest and a bunch of alien artifacts that we could scan. They didn't really do anything other than just give us some information in our PDA, but we did it anyway. This building had all these other doors that you could walk through and discover more places. This particular one had like a water slide in it, but it was for peepers only. Then we found a bunch of other rooms that had these teleporters in them. Since we're so deep, this is going to come in clutch. If you know me, if I see something I can harvest that's valuable, I'm going to do it. Turns out, to be able to harvest these cubes, all we needed was a freaking prawn suit drill. I wish I knew this earlier. I activated another portal, but this time I went through it to see exactly where it led us. Oh, this looks like a kind of like a toxic area. Okay, can confirm we are in the toxic biome. There was one more room remaining, but it was blocked off by a force field that required a blue tablet to get through. And we don't currently own a blue tablet, but because we collected one earlier, we actually learned the blueprint to make them. I just have to get back to my little outpost that we made because I don't have the resources to make a blue tablet just yet. I arrive back at the outpost, jump in my cyclops and use the fabricator to craft ourselves a blue tablet. It only requires some ion cubes and some kyanite, so it's pretty cheap, but I can't return to where I was without being adequately hydrated. Stocked up with goodies, we went back to the primary container facility and the ion cubes had respawned i can't help myself with these things i just gotta have as many as i can get but it is now time to venture on into the unknown we placed the blue tablet in the little lock thingy and proceeded through the force field down this hallway in this new little aquarium containment facility place i realized we were breathing underwater some of the hostile creatures weren't attacking us at all Yeah, what the lady said. We weren't given clear instructions on what to do down here, but after looking around for a while, we found these. I scanned one of these eggs, and then I looked up, and Big Mama was staring right at us. Again, unsure what to do next, I just started scanning everything. From here, we went through the portal to find out where it took us. And this is where we landed here, near the big alien island building that we saw earlier. Bro, what a stitch up. I'm pretty sure there's a leviathan around here. As if they teleport us right next to a leviathan. Now we have one mission and one mission only. We need to craft some hatching enzymes. We need one of all of these materials, which is basically just some of the plant life around this planet. Now this first ingredient we can find in the mushroom forest. This is the fungal enzymes. And you pretty much got unlimited amount amongst these mushrooms. And I knew it was a good idea to set up these planter boxes earlier. We had two of the other ingredients already, the ghost weed and the purple marshmallow bush or pygmy bulb bush. But now this is when things get interesting. I needed a sea crown seed and an ice stalk seed, and I had no idea where to find them. I checked this deep pink purple cavern area and nothing. Maybe it's out in the open in the red grassy area. No, it's not. I might find it in one Ooh. of these caves. Oh, there it is. That's the sea crown. Let's go, baby. Now all we had to find was the ice stalk and this I couldn't find. I checked so many different biomes and it just wouldn't appear for me. Unlike this warper here, it'll appear right in front of me. Running out of ideas and places to look, I went back and planted this sea crown. Figured maybe we might be able to, you know, harvest a couple more or something. I don't know. To make things a little bit quicker, we jumped in our sea moth to go and hunt down this ice stalk yet again struggling to find it i just couldn't remember where i'd seen one earlier but on this little adventure of ours this happened um, did that work oh i think that worked yeah we got to test oh out God. our new little toy seems quite effective against these leviathans so much so i kind of on purpose did it again boom sucker <laughs> it wasn't until day 75 that i checked this little crevice here in the seaweed zone oh there it is yeah daddy's coming for you baby i'm gonna harvest so much of you right now super excited because now we have all that we need i went back to my base got to my planter and then completely messed things up yeah we uh accidentally destroyed our sea crown it wasn't fully grown yet so when you hit it too many times instead of collecting anything you destroy it I had no other choice but to head on out and try and find another sea crown. Honestly, if we didn't have the power of editing right now, you guys would have no idea how long this actually took me to find another sea crown. I looked for so long, in the end I just googled it and it led me to here. This is in the purple marshmallow bulb thingy biome. We made it back to base, but the ice stalk that I planted earlier hadn't fully grown yet. And I wasn't about to smack it out of existence like I did with the sea crown. Day 76 and we're ready to go. We have all the ingredients that we need to make the hatching enzymes. Time to whip this baby up. All right, looks like a bottle of semen. I mean milk, it looks like milk. Yeah, so after all of that, Big Mama died and her babies just went through the teleporter. I followed them through and then I saw this weird thing floating there. Once again, curiosity got the better of me. I immediately assumed that this healed the infection that we had earlier. Wait, if I scan myself, nothing now. And I was right. 
We have no more bacterial infection. No more chlamydia, no more herpes. We are free. And so are the babies. The babies be free. Since we are now free from infection, I think it's pretty safe for us to assume that we can turn off the big alien laser gun. So I went on down to the big needle thingy. I also found a teleporter down here. Figured it might take us to where we need to go. It led us to the first alien facility in the lava biome down deep. And from here, I made my way back to the primary containment facility. We may have freed the beast and its babies, but we still need to get ourselves off this planet. And there's quite a bit of work we need to do to be able to do that. Now we have one simple goal left. We need to build the Neptune rocket and get our butts off this planet. And we're probably going to need a lot of ion cubes. So I harvested this and waited a moment until it respawned to harvest it again. Since I really have no idea what resources we need to be able to craft the Neptune rocket, I made sure to keep my prawn suit and get back to my Cyclops so I could harvest as many materials as possible. I had to make sure I had a whole variety of resources from uranium, gold, titanium, lithium, everything. I even went back to the lava zone because I really didn't want to have to do a massive trip down to get this kyanite again. We were just stocking up on so much stuff, especially the really rare resources like this crystallized sulfur. Two full whole days of farming. I dare say it was quite successful. Surely that's more than enough resources that we're going to need. Since we're basically leaving this planet, I figured we might as well just pack up this entire outpost. Not like we're going to need it anymore. Then I started making the tedious journey back. I have so much loot on me. Imagine if we, like, we got hit now and destroyed. That, that would really suck. This is not a good place to get stuck. What, it, what, is, what is happening? Uh, oh, we're free. We're free. Day 80 and we are back. It's time to make some moves now. Get off this planet. So I whipped up a couple of these ion power cells as it was the main ingredient for the next piece of this Neptune rocket and started crafting this piece. We then followed that up by crafting the Neptune cockpit. Neptune one rocket online. And now it's complete. Yeah, buddy. Oh, we can customize it. We fully customized this in our signature red colors and we named it Johnny Sins because it's like a big tall rocket and Johnny Sins has a big tall rocket if you get it. Then we entered inside Johnny Sins big red rocket and pulled a bunch of levers that I had no idea what they did, sat in our chair and prepared for liftoff. And there you guys have it. We successfully got off this planet within 100 days. I know it's a little bit early, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe button. Until next time, peace.